Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and I have a peg doll tutorial to share with you today inspired by peg dolls that I made in the past. We're going to be using some Lamb's Pride wool yarn in bulky weight. This is going to be for the hair. I've got some black here, a few remnants, and then I have this mohair that I'm going to try as well. I'm using these tiny peg dolls. They're a little bit challenging to work with, but I really think they're super cute in the end. So the first thing I'm going to do is use some of my Distress ink to give my peg dolls a once over so we can have multiple shades of peg dolls. Some of them are going to be left plain neutral. I have some on the left side that I have previously stained. And for this one, I'm going to use some black stain as well. And it's going to dry lighter than what you see here. I also have this ink stain that I'm going to use and I decide just to plop it in rather than to paint it and that works pretty well. And when you just plop it in rather than leaving it in there, it doesn't stain too darkly and it's also pretty even. I've, I've left them in there before and they've stained more on one side versus the other. I'm also using the black paint from my Lyra Opaque Watercolors. I'm going to leave those to dry. So next, I'm going to work on a peg doll that I'm going to leave natural or neutral, but I do want to paint some clothes for this peg doll, and I used some gray, but I didn't really like the way it turned out, so I'm going to add a little bit of white acrylic paint, and I'm going to mix it with that gray, and you can see that it's going to give a completely different look. You're not going to see the wood grain, but it still gives a light color, a light layer of color, and I really like the way that this turns out. I'm working with these peg dolls differently than I usually work with peg dolls and finger puppets. So this is one that I had previously stained or painted with a light tan and I'm going to use the black paint in order to paint on an eye patch and an eye. And this was a little bit challenging. It's easier if you have a fine tip paintbrush, but you don't want to use a sharpie for the eyes otherwise it ends up bleeding through the wood grain then I gave him kind of a stern looking face there and I used a felt tip marker to do the mouth as well so now let's give him some interesting clothes his clothes are going to look a little bit like a jail cell for some reason I'm going to do some vertical stripes but his his skin tone is a tan, so once I'm done with this, I realize that I actually need to add a little bit of white in between the black, and that ended up being a little bit messy, but you can see what it looks like in a bit. I want to add some pants here, which is just in the gray. It's really challenging working with such a tiny peg doll, but I'm going to add some white here, and to do white, you pretty much need to use the acrylic paint versus a watercolor paint because it's just not going to show up. Having the white means that you can also mix it with some of your other colors and make them more opaque and give them a, a little bit of a different look. So he's looking a little bit messy because the white got onto the black so I fixed it up by repainting some of those black stripes and I made two of them, one with thinner stripes and one with thicker stripes. So I'm going to use this Lamb's Pride bulky weight yarn in order to make the hair. The Lamb's Pride also comes in a worsted weight, but I find the bulky weight works a little bit better for the hair. And I also have my hot glue gun that is heating up and ready to go, but I want to add the face first. You can do the face before or after, but I'm finding that it's a little bit easier for me to do the face, and then I can see where the hair is going to go. If you do it the other way around, you might not leave enough space to do the face, and then it might just get crowded. So I am using the paints to do the eyes. This is a better way to do it versus a Sharpie pen. I have done both ways. This stays right on top of the wood grain and doesn't bleed up and down. I am using my Stedler red pen in order to make the mouth. And now it's time to glue on the hair. So I'm going to show you this whole process. It is lengthy and it does take a little bit of skill in order to make the hair look good, especially if you're not going to cover it with a hat. And this little guy is just going to get a bunch of hair. 
So when working with these tiny little peg dolls, this size happens to have a really small head compared to the body. So I actually like making a full head of hair. It kind of balances out the size of the head versus the body. So I'm working in little sections, adding some glue and then taking my wool yarn and kind of squishing it into the glue and then working again in other sections so I can add some more glue and more hair till the entire head is covered. Sometimes I'll loop the hair. As you can see, there's some pieces that are really long here and rather than adding another piece, I'm just going to loop that hair because we're gonna give them a haircut. And then I just take those ends and then smush it into the glue. You have to work fast because the glue dries quickly or cools quickly rather. And this is, I think, a medium temperature a uh, hot gun, hot glue gun, and so it's kind of easier to use, in my opinion, uh, for <laughs> not hurting your fingers, but you do need to work faster, I think, than using a high temperature glue gun, in which case I would not use that with the children. Okay, so I'm sorry that you can't see <laughs> sometimes when I go out of frame, but I am trying to get all of the hair situated in a way that's going to look natural but also making sure that all of the pieces are glued down because this wool yarn is a lot of just fibers that are twisted together lightly. So now it's time to give them a nice good haircut so you don't want to cut too short because if it's too short that's it. If it's long you have a little bit of flexibility with that and there are little bits that are kind of coming undone so I'm adding a little bit of glue. The challenge is making sure that the glue doesn't show and that it's not matted down in any one place when you hold it in order for it to cool and dry. So once I've given him a nice haircut then I can start to style the hair a little bit. I wanted it to be really full and kind of messy. We're making a bunch of pirates and this one's kind of like a teenage pirate. So these are all good pirates, but we do need to have someone in charge and somewhat of a more surly villain for the pirates. And that's going to be these two fellows here with the striped outfit. We're going to leave him bald. And I think this is the first time I've done a bald finger puppet or peg doll. And when I had finished making the whole peg doll, I realized he doesn't really need hair. He actually looks pretty good this way. So I added a little black around the collar because as I was putting the felt on it, I realized that it looked a little bit undone. So I added just a little bit of black around the collar and now I'm using my hot glue gun to adhere just a small strip of this dark gray wool felt. And then I'm also adding a little dot of glue on the collar and I'm going to pull the collar down for one of them and then for the other one I'm going to keep it kind of tight right around the neck and I want it almost to look like it's a uh, kind of an open collar kind of a regal looking important kind of pirate. I'm also adding a little bit of white glue in order to add some buttons down the front. This is definitely something that's going to come undone. I decided to use glue rather than the hot glue just because I have a little bit more time to work these little beads as buttons into position, but definitely if children are playing with this, those little beads are going to pop right off. So they're looking really good. So I'm gonna set those aside and work on another one. So we're working on multiple peg dolls at the same time because as their outfits dry or as their skin tone dries, I'm working on another one at the same time. So we end up making a variety and you get an idea of kind of the look that we're trying to go for. Each one has its unique features, but they all kind of go together. So at this point, instead of painting on an eye patch, I'm going to make one out of some wool felt, which was really challenging. You can only make these with the wool felt. If you try to make an eye patch with any other kind of felt, it's not, you're not going to be able to cut it that finely and it's just not going to stay put. Even with this wool felt, I ended up pulling it too hard and I had to fix it. So I am now going to add some hair and the mistake I made was to add hair in the same color as the eye patch. So once we're done, you can barely tell about the eye patch. And so I try to remedy this with a little bit of a hat. But overall, if you're going to do a black eye patch, I would recommend making the hair in a different color. I'm going to go about making the hair the same way. You can see that it's quite long, but a lot of those 
pieces of fiber I'm just going to loop and glue onto the head and once we're done we can give them a nice haircut none of these pirates are going to have super long hair it's just going to be kind of bushy messy hair and i love styling it once it's all cut gives it each of those little peg dolls so much personality so now we're going to paint some stripes along the front of this peg doll we're using that white paint and we're going to do some stripes now, doing the stripes is really, really challenging. I would recommend watering down your acrylic paint just a little bit so that it's a little bit easier to do. Overall, they end up looking kind of messy, but once all of the peg dolls are done, you can't really tell so much how messy they are, but if you wanted them super neat, then you could use tiny strips of tape, and that way you can get a nice, clean edge. So I'm working with a bunch of remnants and I had this little remnant piece of gray felt and I decided to kind of make a hat, which is sort of like a bandana. I have a couple of beads as accessories and I am putting them on the collar of his little jacket and then another little bead right at the collar. These are chokeables and they will also fall off if you've got young children who are playing with these. My children tend to be a little more gentle with our peg dolls, but still some of those elements will fall off over time. So now it's time to work on this peg doll here. And I realized that on the back, it was a little bit uneven with the paint. So I went ahead and I touched that one up and now I'm going to work on this guy. So I'm going to add some eyes. They're going to be a little bit hard to see. And so working with the opaque watercolors is going to allow that to show through when you use the Distress Ink stains as the skin tone. So once I get those eyes in place, I draw a little mouth. And when you see it up close, you can definitely see those elements, but from afar, it's a little bit more challenging. So I'm gonna give them like a little bandana and it's also just a spare piece of black wool felt that I have. And I'm going to use my hot glue gun just to affix those two little pieces in the back. I cut kind of a triangle or I might've even just had a triangle as a remnant piece, but I didn't want to look like a little girl's bonnet or girl's headband. So I'm going to add a little more glue and kind of squeeze those two little pieces in the back. So it looks more like a beanie versus a headband. Now it's time to give him a few details and I'm going to make some stripes on him as well. I really like the way these stripes turn out. And again, they're kind of messy, but I still like this look. So for some of these, they're just completely painted with some hair or a hat. Other ones have some elements of clothing using the wool felt. And then other ones have even more details like the little beads or a little bandana. So once you get them all together, I think they look really nice as a group because they each have their own unique look, but they all coordinate really well. So I've painted an eye patch on this one. I always painted the eye patch over the right eye for all of them, but you can paint them over either eye. And this guy is gonna get some brown hair. So again, we're gonna do it the same way by putting a little bit of that glue. I usually start right at the top and then squish down that end piece into the glue. Again, you do need to work quickly, but if your glue cools before your hair is attached, sometimes I will take the tip of the glue gun and just press it into the glue on the head and let it melt again. And that way it heats up and I can add the hair to it. I love giving them their haircuts. It's like they finally gain their personality when you trim their hair. I really like these tiny, tiny little peg dolls with some hair uh, on their head. They are more challenging to work with, but the kids love to play with them. They're super cute and adorable, and they never end up being the babies of the family with the other peg dolls, which are much larger. I usually make these to make their own unique little peg dolls. So all the pirates are this size, and they're all adults. So for this one, I decided to paint the whole thing white and I actually regret doing that because I think that once I'm, 
I've painted it white with the acrylic paint. I'm not going to be able to come back over it with the opaque watercolors, but actually it turns out fine. So while that's drying, I'm going to paint this one red, but I still had some white on my paintbrush, so it ended up being pink. So I added some black into that red. And now it's a darker red, kind of a deep maroon sort of color. I did want a bright red for him, but that's okay. So I'm going to finish painting him all up, and then while he dries, I can work on another peg doll. So let's put him aside and go back to that peg doll with the white acrylic paint. And we're going to give him some stripes and we're going to do some horizontal stripes across the front. It almost looks like a captain's jacket. And then I'm going to take a little bit of that black and give him what looks like a pair of pants. And he's looking pretty cute. You could just stop right here or you could add a little jacket to him. There are a lot of choices. So here they all are together. I love the way they turned out. My children did as well, especially my 14 year old. And here they are with one of our pirate ships that is in our schoolroom. They are all the crew to this little pirate ship. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to check out the blog post that accompanies this video. That link is down in the description box below. If you'd like to see some of our other peg doll and finger puppet tutorials, you can tap on the screen right now. That playlist is also in the description box below. And if you'd like to see what we're crafting on a daily basis, you can find me on Instagram at Pepper and Pine.